Welcome, and thank you for joining this meditative journey. I cannot help but reflect again that this year has made the world seem somehow closer and more immediately impactful on our lives. I assume that is because we are all feeling tender and sensitive to every outside stimulus in the absence, up until now at least, of normal interaction with our environment. I will share with you that as I was preparing for this time together, my thoughts were filled with contradictions. I was anticipating the festival of Shavuot, the time when we celebrate the giving of the Torah to the Jewish people at Mount Sinai, which was Sunday, and that celebration, that observance was Sunday evening and yesterday. And I was and am simultaneously heartsick over the news emerging moment by moment from the Middle East. Every now and then, reality hits us in the face in a way that denies us our usual defenses, rationalizations, excuses, and various means of dealing with complex issues. We usually can file into an already structured place of understanding in our psyches, but sometimes, Reality is so harsh, so raw, so painful, that our usual defenses fail us. Our normal explanations fall short. Our confidence in what we know and believe is shaken. This is how I am currently feeling about the tragedy unfolding in Israel and its neighborhood. I confess that I was slow on the uptake when the news started to reflect the resumption of hostilities. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to know it. I felt weary and unable to sustain what appeared to be very bad news. As the ongoing tension and conflict have continued, I have felt compelled to read, to hear, and to learn as much as possible about what is going on. That knowledge brings me no comfort I am truly heartsick with the struggle in which Israel is engaged with the addition this time of the, of the internal danger posed by the Israeli Palestinians, as well as the external danger posed by what appears to me to be an increasingly vocal and willing anti-Semitic world. I confess, I may be paranoid here, but I find myself in wishing mode. I wish the world would leave us alone for once. I wish we did not always appear to be such an easy and agreed upon target. Sometimes reality hurts and feels overwhelming. Part of what makes this particularly difficult, I expect, is that we are just now emerging from a reality that was also exceedingly painful in many ways and overwhelming. But we are emerging from it, and that should give us hope for this new challenge, this new challenge and affront to our hearts and souls. There is something else, something that I at least find comforting and instructive. This Torah that we are celebrating by imagining that we are once again standing at Sinai, receiving it anew. This Torah is a remarkable document. It is the Torah that constituted us, the Jewish people, and it is the Torah that has maintained us for three millennia. It is the Torah that is the source of who we are and what we believe. And yet this historic document, this repository of the most sublime ideas that govern humanity, this ethical treatise that fundamentally changed the way we think about other human beings, contains within it a most realistic approach to life. What many do not realize is that while the Torah posits a world of absolute human dignity, worth, equality, justice, and righteousness, while it, in, while it envisions a world of beauty and peace, of freedom, 
and the full flowering of the human spirit. It is simultaneously down to earth and instructive in the here and now. For example, while it envisions a time of peace and harmony, it recognizes war as a contemporary reality and thus enumerates laws to make war as civilized as possible. These laws include such considerations as who is exempt from military service, how to treat the land and property of a defeated enemy, and how to treat captives taken in battle, among other instructions. While the entire Torah is based upon the premise that slavery is an affront to God, it nevertheless acknowledges the reality that the Israelites themselves, when they settled in the land, were slaveholders. The Torah thus has laws governing the most humane ways of dealing with slaves, which it recognizes are human beings. There is a grave reality currently on the ground in Israel. While we cannot wish it away, or ignore it away. We can look at it squarely. We can acknowledge that this is not where we want to be. We can affirm in our minds and imaginations our vision of a world truly and truly at peace and what that would look like. We can then, as my daughter taught me this week, we can then strengthen ourselves and our resolve to live in the in-between place, in the tension between what is and what we want it to be, in the nexus of our actuality and our aspirations. This is not a comfortable place to be, but if we are honest, we might find that we live much of our lives in an in an in-between state waiting, hoping, anticipating, fearing, any number of outcomes. So let us pause in recognition, acknowledgement, and appreciation of our ability to maintain this balancing act, sometimes without even realizing it. And let us sit and breathe in that in-between space of not knowing. So I invite you to take the position in which you are most comfortable and yet most amenable, most available to meditating for a few moments. Let us put our feet on the floor firmly, squarely, on the ground, wherever we might be someplace, excuse me, where we feel firmly established. Let us unclench our hands and let them rest on the arms of our chairs and our laps. As we unclench our hands, let us unclench other places in our bodies, our feet, our toes holding on tightly our backs, our shoulders, our necks, our faces, our cheeks, our cheekbones, our jaws. How many of us hold our jaws tightly? And the release of it induces yawning even. I think I will any moment. I've already closed my eyes. I invite you to do the same or just to gaze softly at something in the distance without focusing on what that point might be. Let us release it all. And then let us take that conscious breath. Let us fill up our insides with that precious air, with the feeling of expansion, 
of vitality, of filling up where we may have felt a bit empty. Let us feel that gift of life going to the extremities, the tops of our heads, the tips of our toes. We might imagine it reaching every finger, every fingernail, every finger, every fingertip. Let us hold on to that fullness. Let us indulge in it a bit. And then we let it go. Slowly, perhaps, or all at once. Whatever is your instinct at the moment. Let us let the whole breath out so that we might inhale it once again. Fully. Deeply. Comfortingly. Expansively. Perhaps that intake reminds us we're here. We are here fully, just like the breath, fully, completely. And as we let it go, let us not diminish ourselves. Let us again breathe in. as we do. We may think, we may think of ourselves as fully, with strength, with conviction, with vigor even, inhabiting in this moment an in-between place. And yet, even though we are in that place, we are full. We are complete. We are not in conflict with our bodies. We are not in conflict with our breath. That is all one. And reminds us of an underlying unity of which we are a part, even when we live at the center of conflict. Let this breath affirm us, affirm our presence, our existence, our cognizance, our sensitivity and compassion. It occurs to me that historically, it is not unusual for us to exist in a place of tension between opposing forces. Wherever we have lived in the world, there has always been a push-pull between our faith and its requirements and the demands and expectations of the culture in which we lived. We have become adept at living in the in-between. We have learned how to adapt, how to accommodate, how to compromise, how to retreat, and how to think about living reality while hoping for a better future. There is a concept in Jewish life 
of Yerushalayim Lamala and Yerushalayim Lamata. Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, Lamala, above, and Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, Lamata, below. Our sages understood that in our faith's worldview, Jerusalem represents perfection, the ultimate realization of every worthy goal, the reign of peace and harmony, the fervent aspirations of every Jewish soul. That is Yerushalayim Lamala, Jerusalem on high, a truly golden place of every dream fulfilled. And yet, throughout the centuries, our sages have lived in the real Jerusalem, Yerushalayim Lamata, a city like many others, with dirt and difficulties and people crowded together and arguing over boundaries, over food, shelter, water. They set it as our task to transform the real Jerusalem into the heavenly one, to live in the reality of this world while striving to uplift it, to fix it, to heal it. That is what our prayers and our studies teach us to do, to give thanks for the Jerusalem we have, to guard it and protect it, to care for it and love it with all of its deficiencies while never losing sight of the goal of all our strivings, the dream that has animated our people from ancient times to make of our world a heavenly place. So let us breathe. Let us breathe our feet on the ground and our souls always ascending, our spirits alive with possibilities, even when no possibility seems available to us. Let us breathe in. And we breathe in the knowledge that we are incomplete. That we will continue to face <clears throat> opposites, simultaneous opposites, simultaneous poles pulling at us, pulling at our unified vision. We need to hold both the unity of what we know we are, especially when we take those breaths. We breathe them into this one body that we have, knowing that it is a gift from the one divine source of our faith. And yet we know that if we are to live in real time, this world will present us with conflicts, with diametrical opposites, with tensions that seem only to seek our total frustration, if not our destru very destruction. We resist. That is not Yerushalayim Lamala. It's not our aspirations and it is not our reality. Our reality is better than that. It doesn't always appear to be. But we know that it is and we know that it must be. So let us breathe in. And let us release. Let us breathe in the, the determination to live in the in-between. And yet to know simultaneously 
we are whole. We are complete. We are beings given gifts with which to confront every reality and with which to anticipate a better future. Even the fact that we breathe in and out, that we can breathe in and out, even when facing, whether globally or personally, moments of great trial, of pain, sometimes moments of joy even that stop our breath within us, even that we can continue to breathe, it has to be a source of some sustenance, both figuratively and literally. I have said it before, I think it is apt, I breathe. Therefore, I am. And as we breathe with gratitude, I would share this prayer with you. It is based on a prayer of Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlav, and it appears in Sidur HaAvodah Shabalev is the Israeli Movement for Progressive Judaism's prayer book. May we see the day when war and bloodshed cease, when a great peace will embrace the whole world. Then nation will not threaten nation and humankind will not again know war. For all who live on earth shall realize we have not come into being to hate or to destroy. We have come into being to praise, to labor and to love. Compassionate God, bless the leaders of all nations with the power of compassion. Fulfill the promise conveyed in scripture. I will bring peace to the land and you shall lie down and no one shall terrify you. I will rid the land of vicious beasts and it shall not be ravished by war. Let love and justice flow like a mighty stream. Let peace fill the earth as the waters fill the sea. And let us say, Amen. May this be a week of increasing peace for every one of us. And please God, for our world. I will look forward to seeing you next week. And may God bless you. <laughs>